This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike and I do bees. Welcome back to another day in my 2020 beekeeping season. Remember folks, we started this thing in the winter. We're going all the way to the end of fall till they're done and ready for winter. This is a how I do video, not a how to video. I'm not here just trying to instruct people and tell them what's best and what's right. I'm just logging my season a day at a time as I come out to the bee yard and show you how I do things here down south. So I'm out here at the hives. Uh, I got off work um, today and decided it's a beautiful day. There's a smell of goldenrod in the air and I figured I'm gonna go ahead and start my assessments. Well, we started some assessments in the last video and uh, that was out at the, at the dairy by the pond and uh, those bees were all queen right and that's what we're going to do today just going to go through and do the same thing we did there similar to the summer assessments um what we have going on is making sure they're queen right making sure they got a decent amount of bees maybe condense them if need be uh if they're not using one of the brood chambers um and go into winter as a single and i'm going to replace any diametaceous earth filled beetle blasters with um oil okay and I just don't think the diametaceous earth is near as effective. It's just my opinion. And I, what I've seen in the results uh, wasn't pleasing as I had numerous beetles still running around inside the trap, outside, and coming in and out of it regularly, where at least in the oil they're drowning. So where I turned around and I put an oil trap in, and a week later I had whew, 50 to 100 beetles in it. So that's how I want to get them. I want to kill them. I want them dead. I want them out of here. I want to exterminate them. I hate small hive beetles. That's how I feel. So I want them dead quick, and the oil seems to do that. That's why we're going to go back to the oil. So that's what it'll be doing. Now the goldenrod flow. Supers. I told you all one reason I don't put supers on is I don't have the workforce because I don't build my hives up. But another thing, too, is our goldenrod here is three weeks, and it's never a, a solid flow for making honey for you to pull. Uh, for harvesting, robbing, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't work out that way here. We don't have that type of a flow in the fall. Uh, mainly it's a flow for the bees here and that's exactly how I treat it. So after the flow in the next two weeks I'll be just going through and weighing the hives by hand and seeing if they're heavy and making note in my in my mind and in my book of who had a lot of honey who didn't and I may need to move some or we'll just put a feeder on and feed them. So something else about honey in the winter time and in the summer too, but mostly in the winter. Uh, it's not just about stores. It's about placement of the honey, first of all, for the cluster to move. For you guys up north, you know that well. But also, it's a, uh, it helps regulate temperature. Okay, it's an insulation. Honey is an insulation. So you see how the nest will be wrapped with a rainbow and, and it'll be around the sides. Okay, so you basically got a ball in the middle. Ooh, that, ooh, that golden rod is strong. You have a ball in the middle for the brood nest. And that honey does act as a as a temperature barrier as well so it's more than just food it is uh it helps regulate temperature too and what i saw in one of the hives let's take a look at this one what i saw in a hive um at the pond which i didn't care for but it's not the end of the world i saw a nest that was like this okay between the two boxes and I'd rather have it all the way in the bottom. Now this hive, for example, last time I was in this one, it's all honey up top, brood in the bottom. That's what we really want. And it reeks of goldenrod. Now look, I like the smell of goldenrod. To me, it's a sign of life. It's a sign of stores coming in. It's a sign of honey coming in. I love it. I love the smell of it. When I smell it in the fall, I'm like, wow, I just love walking out here and smelling it. But yeah, so what we, we, we really don't want them all in the top for sure. In that case, may have to reduce them down to a single brood put a feeder on top in the middle I'll live with that okay because we will have wild mustard coming in and things like that in the winter time if we have a warm winter we'll be all right if not I can emergency feed them but ideally I want them in the bottom all right guys so what I'm doing is I'm only going through hives that we haven't been in remember we've been in a couple of these doing beetle jails and blasters and different interventions we went in one that looked weak so we're going in these we've already been in those so we're only going in hives that we have not been in okay you and i i mean when i say we whenever i say we on my videos that's what i'm talking about because i find this is us we're bringing each other along on this so i see beetles coming out the edges now, there's a swiffer let's look at the beetles can y'all see those beetles y'all getting ready for winter up there i'm still dealing with beetles 
So guys, there you are. There's my, there's my typical Swiffer success. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've got seven. One, two. There's a bee right there. It's caught. One more. Caught in the propolis and all. Look at that. Come on out of there. Ugh. I think I injured her, but maybe she can get out. So I said four, five, six beetles. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine bees. That's bad odds. I didn't check the bottom, but that's not good odds. So I'm done with Swiffers. These are some I soaked. Done all kinds of things with them. And I honestly, I'm done with them. I have not seen the benefit yet. I've watched people use them effectively. Somebody said, well, maybe it's bee space. Well, maybe it is, but I got the right bee space. So I'm not putting shims in. I don't use inner covers. Maybe that's the problem. But the one I saw that worked so well, he didn't have inner cover. Now, this queen was the kitchen queen. Y'all go back. I'll have to link the video. This is the queen that I had an extra cell. Or I don't even remember the story anymore, but she she uh, emerged out of her cell in my kitchen. I put her in a mating nuke, got her mated, and this is her hive. And she was laying pretty good. Oh, let's get this frame, boy. It's stuck. I haven't been in here in a while. So we got honey stores and more honey stores. So we want up top. Got a couple frames of honey, three frames of honey. I got my yellow bifocals on. This is full of goldenrod nectar. Right there. So I got three frames on the outside each, plus the tops are full. And full of brood. Full of brood. That's some strong stuff. I love the smell of golden rye. So I looked down in the bottom after I had that frame out. The bottom is full of bees. The top is honey out to the outsides. They're packing it in with nectar. We've got eggs. We've got larvae. We're done. Canola oil. Fresh canola oil. Try these on the edge. Mm -hmm. Get out from under there, B. There we go. Hopefully we catch some beetles. But they've got a good population, so they can maintain it. So that queen is doing good. That was a kitchen queen, I call her, because mm -hmm. she came out of her cell in the kitchen. Now, something I do want to mention, guys, is uh, I had a comment from a guy. Now, his comment's not showing up for some reason. At first, I thought maybe it was a scam. But, uh... His channel is legitimate and I saw a comment and I don't know if it's how he has his privacy settings set or what but I'd like for y'all to go check this this young man's page out it was pretty neat to see and he commented and asked me to sub okay he didn't, you know just hey can you sub I'm trying to get to a hundred subscribers and I said well well sure let me go look at this thing and I looked at his channel and it's pretty neat and he's a 14 year old I, he's in Indiana because he won the junior beekeeping award for the year there. He's in his first year of beekeeping. And what he's doing is he's documenting his beekeeping now. And that, I thought that was pretty neat. His his name is Darian Sharp. Darian Sharp, D-A-R-I-E-N Sharp with an E. And he's got a channel. He wanted to get to 100 subscribers and I think he did that today. Um, and when I joined, I think it was at 92. And he's just logging his beekeeping. I think it's pretty cool that a young kid is, is and I'm sorry to call him a kid, but I think it's pretty cool he's doing that. He's got a mentor, he was in his mentor's bee yard, and his mentor's got a bunch of hives, and you can tell they're seasoned, he knows what he's doing, so he's got a good mentor on his hands, he's making some videos, he's, you know, just showing people how you do this and how you do that in beekeeping, I think it's pretty cool, so let's go over and visit his uh, channel, I'll put the link in the description, and uh, hey, sub subscribe to the, to the young man and, and like some of his videos, he just put one out today, making candy boards for winter. This hive, oh it's a lizard, this hive swarmed on me and didn't end up yeah, I got honey off of it, but I should have gotten like five supers off of it. It was so strong, but it swarmed very early. 
Man, they are in there good. You can tell when you ain't been in them a while. That propolis. Not a lot of honey on the outside. See them some spoiled bee bread. That's what it looks like. Let's see what this next frame looks like, because that one was not looking... I didn't like what I saw. Uh, when you do that sharp snap. Uh, spotty, spotty, spotty groove. This is a queen. They requeened after a swarm. And that is not looking good at all. They're real runny on the frames. I have to go deeper into this one. It smells normal. I've got eggs, guys. I'm seeing eggs, but uh, they're very spotty. And they look all dried out. Like the cells look very dry. What I'm seeing doesn't look healthy. Look, see that? That's shotgun pattern. It's not ideal at all. I mean, it's going to be okay for now, but that's not something we're going to carry on with. In the, I'm not going to replace my queen this late, but that's, that's going to be made note of right there. She is on notice, guys. That queen is on notice. The larvae looks healthy. It's pearly white like it should be. I don't see any crazy looking bees. The bees look good. I don't see any sick waddling around bees, but uh, I don't like that. Pearly white larvae, but just very spotty. We're going through this one a little bit more. I mean, that's what you get when they swarm. Sometimes uh, you don't get a good queen that they, they replace with. A little bit of honey, pollen, pollen, all pollen. This is all pollen. If anything, is how I was pollen bound at one point. So I saw eggs on one frame. I saw terrible brood. There's some old brood down here. Kind of at a loss for this hive because there is brood in the bottom. It's full of pollen in the bottom. Yeah, see, we got brood in the bottom. So I'm not necessarily going to condense it just yet. All right, I'm going to put it back together, folks. Here's what I'm seeing. I've got brood on the bottom. So in this hive, this is all pollen. This is brood. On the top, this is honey, this is brood. It's kind of weird. I had to move away from that hive. They're getting pesky. Put them back together. That hive has got an inferior queen, hands down. While they're queen right, they're really not queen right. Her eggs are very, very sporadic. She's not even putting them in good. Sometimes you see them put them in really good, and then they pull them out, maybe because they're hygienic and they got to get the mites out, or they pull them out because the larvae is something wrong with them. She's just putting them all over. Um, it's not a laying worker hive. They're one single egg right in the middle. They're just here and there. The brood's coming out, but it's, you saw how spotty it is. It's what they call that shotgun pattern. And that's why they're not very strong after the swarm. So that's that queen that they made. Obviously, uh, she did not, she, she was inferior. So it's late. It's too late to be bothering with requeening. And uh, there was a few other things I noticed in that hive, like some um, bee bread that was looking kind of uh, moldy or something. So I don't know that they're healthy. I'm very careful about combining hives. If I have another weak one with a halfway better queen, I'll combine them. Otherwise, we'll give them a shot. That's the kind of hive I don't expect to make it. Very little. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, no longer.
the trap and pollen. It goes above that little tab and it hangs there. I put this in just in case it falls. Uh, that's not bad. All right, well, that's it for today. It was just a quick afternoon. I wanted to uh, go out and take a look at a few hives. I didn't only look but at two, though. And that's probably all much we had time in the video for. Uh, I actually did kind of think that that number four was a little on the weaker side. It didn't look like it had built up from the outside looking in. And obviously it did not. It could be a number of things. It could be a mite problem. Uh, I think the queen's inferior, first and foremost. That's the problem. And uh, it kind of stumped me for a minute because I... I mean, I knew it was going to be weak, but I thought I'd just condense it. But uh, she had brood in the bottom, too, and it's very sporadic brood, so she's not very promising. That hive's not promising. Uh, I'll put it back together for now. I'm going to rethink what I might want to do with that one, but uh, it's not a good hive. Obviously, uh, they've stayed alive through the summer, but there's not a lot of honey. There's, I saw, like, very little nectar. I don't even know that I saw any nectar. I saw a ton of pollen or bee bread in there. Um, so they, they look like they might even been pollen bound at one point in time. Uh, so that, that hive is in bad shape. So I'm going to rethink it. I may take some fresh frames and uh, condense them down to one box, give them some space. Yeah, see what she does. Um, I didn't want to condense down because there were about three frames in the bottom that had brood. So I didn't want to condense them down. So guys, a quick note on combining now. There, that, that's an option for that hive, right? Everybody would think that's a... Uh, that's something we immediately think of uh, as beekeepers. We can combine them, but I learned my lesson a few years back. I don't, I don't just go out there and start combining hives. Um, I've, I've ended up killing off a hive like that, ruining a good queen, losing a good queen, and, and another one being made. And now I've got different genetics coming off of different eggs or whatever. I don't like doing that. I might be combining a sick hive. I might be combining a hive that's loaded with mites that did, the OAV didn't knock back, or they were already sick. Um, so what I'll do sometimes is I'll combine two weak hives and maybe even let the queens fight it out or most time if I see one of them and I know she's inferior I'll pick the better of the two and maybe keep her but um, I won't put a hive like that on top of one of my good strong hives especially especially going into winter I just don't do it that's personally that's my personal decision because you don't know what you're passing on um, you know you could be passing on anything, disease, genetic, whatever it is. You just don't, you, you just got to be careful doing that, in, in my opinion. That's my opinion, guys. Uh, now, when the honey flow's coming, I'll take two hives, and maybe I got two singles with good queens, and I'll, I'll split a queen off with a frame and make a nuke, and I'll combine those. Or I know one's a little inferior, and they're not, they're not building up fast enough, and I'll put two of those together for the honey flow, uh, singles and such. And I'll, I'll, Put one that I knew was strong and maybe uh, we did a split and I let them make their own queen and didn't come back off a mating flight. Or one that swarmed and maybe I, I noticed that they didn't requeen. I'll put them on there, but uh, a hive that's dwindling and weak and just doesn't look healthy, uh, nah, I don't, I, don't, I don't combine. That's not my, I'd rather let it fight for itself and then requeen it if it makes it next year. That, that would be my thing. Or, or then combine it with a couple weak ones coming out of winter or whatever, but I, I wouldn't combine it now. That's just my personal opinion. Um, the first hive, it looked good. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, and that's my queen that, she's a new queen. Or uh, not new now, but she was one that we got to see her on video, all of us. Go back to that video, take a look when she came out. We ended up putting her in a box and I did some follow-ups on her. And there's the ultimate follow-up. She's going into winter. Got about 14 more hives to do. We'll do those later. Once again, I appreciate everybody that's watching. Hey guys, if you like the content of this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That is the best way you can support the channel. It does get this video out to those that are searching for uh, bee videos and it pops up on the recommended pages. And don't forget to subscribe. You know, the old, everybody says it's subscribe, but hey, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And I sure appreciate it. And guys, don't forget to share this video with your friends, your family, anybody that enjoys watching bees. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful evening. May the Lord God bless you guys keep you guys.